chapter 2 verse 9 he said we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a whole nation a peculiar people so we're in peculiar times strange the world would say strange times yet the world thought we were strange people and uh, now yeah. the world that thought we were strange to seek uh, our advice uh, Yes, I've had more non-believers approach me in this time than ever before. I've had more people call me and ask me about God. People that never talked about God before are interested in God. And what I love about the Lord is the Lord knows how to make this thing understandable for even the most simplest mind. Psalms chapter 119 verse 133 says the entrance of your word gives light. I'm going to go there right now because I just 
I just want to jump into it, man. I, there's a burning in my belly tonight. There's something just burning in my heart. Um, and I hope most of you saw my Facebook post. For those of you that didn't, we'll talk about that. So Psalms 119 verse 130 says, The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That wasn't even part of the word that God had given me, but the word connects all around anyway. And I just feel like the Lord is saying to somebody tonight that as the word goes into you, what you're going to experience is, a, is an awakening. You're going to experience a, a, a new level of understanding. And no matter how simple your understanding is, God knows how to bring this word to you so that you can understand it and apprehend it. I don't believe God just wants us to study the word. God wants us to become the word. Become the word. We become yes. as he is. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, it says, as he is, so are you. So are yes. we in this world. Mm -hmm. So God don't want us to just study the word and know the word, but a word for word. He wants us to actually become that word because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of words. Yes. And that's why he wants us to become what we see, what we read. He wants us to not just understand it, but apprehend it, to hold on to it, to keep the word so that when trouble time comes, you have something that you can utilize to persevere, persevere through the storm, persevere through the trials of life. I I've been watching my mother for the last couple of years. And what a woman of, word, of the word. What a woman of faith. Yes. I want to tell you guys her, her testimony, and, and then we'll go into the word. Well, her testimony is part of the word. I don't want <coughs> to separate things and make this be one thing. It, it's all part of the teaching of the Lord. We had a, a, an incredible encounter with God today, and I, I, I just want to share part of that as a backdrop for what God's going to do tonight, because he's no respecter of persons. That's right. No respecter of persons. What God does for me, he will do for you. If you're willing to align yourself to what he gives you to do. I believe God rewards obedience. Obedience. Proverbs 28, verse 20 says, a faithful man shall abound in blessings. God rewards obedience. Yes. And because she was obedient to what God had called her to do, and he gives each one of us different things, so we've got to be able to hear the voice of God. We've got to have people around us to be able to help us discern the will of God. Uh, Proverbs eleven twenty four says, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Yeah. So if you're going to be safe in the, in the surroundings of the Lord, if you're going to be safe in that place that God has called you, you've got to have people around you that can pour into your life. I love having people around me that are strong in areas where I'm weak. The Bible says, let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. So having people around you that have strengths in areas that maybe you are weak is wise. And they will give you wise counselor. See, I, I believe this. A person that is called into your life to give you counsel is going to tell you the truth no matter what. And they'll tell you truth that might hurt you. And it might even offend you at times, but it's not. The purpose isn't to offend you or hurt you. The purpose is to deliver you. Yes. When, when a person shares a truth with you, somebody that you've been walking with, somebody that you've had faith and trust in to tell you the things that God is saying, when they tell you the truth and, and it startles you or even hurts your feelings, you got to take that into consideration that maybe that was something deep that you overlooked. That's what having wise counsel around you will do. And I say that because oftentimes we want to hear what we want to hear. If you've got somebody around you that's telling you everything you want to hear, that's not a friend, that's a slave. Huh. And, God, and God didn't call any of us to slavery. We are sons, not slaves. Amen. I say that because when God is giving you something, you have to follow the plan of God. Because if you do, you're going to experience the great blessings of God. Yes. My mother had to follow the plan of God. Some people get healed instantaneously. We pray for them, and they get an instantaneous healing. We love those because we see the manifestation of it right away. Right. And then some people get healed over a period of time. 
Some people God uses medicine. Yes. He's given man a brilliant mind to be able to create, create as he creates. And I believe God has a lot to do with that. My mother, God gave her uh, all three. He gave a wise counselor around her to help her discern some of the things that God was saying. It, he also gave her a product called Zeal that we all take. And, and, and my mentor took that for a season as well. And she went into remission with cancer. So we know that that works. She was taking Zeal as part of her regimen that God had given her. And she also had to do some chemotherapy. And, and we've had a battle, a, a, an uphill battle, it seems at times. Like we were just fighting against the tide, against the wind. And last, last year she had some chemotherapy because they discovered that the cancer had come back. And she had some chemotherapy, and that round of chemotherapy almost killed her. She ended up in the hospital for four months. A almost died several times during that, during, during that season. But God's hand was on her, prayer warriors were surrounding her, and the multitude of counselors was guiding her. And she got through that season. She had, you know, had to have quite a few surgeries and some things happened that altered her life greatly, but God was with her. And, and after she got through that, that horrible time, four months of being in a hospital and rehabs and all of those things, she went home and she had to start chemo again. The doctor said that the cancer was still there. And he wasn't very hopeful. We didn't publicly display that. We told that with friends and families that was close, but we didn't publicly display that. There are some things that are not for public ears and we wanted to use discretion. We also, we had intercessors on assignment praying for her, uh, giving us direction on what God was doing at times. She started the chemo process a couple of months ago and they uh, and God had given us an awesome man of God. His name is Jude. He's a researcher, scientist, a, a, a pharmacist, and he works with a team of doctors around the world. I'm saying this, people, because God will send the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows what we need. The Bible says he knows how to deliver the godly. Yeah. Right? He will make a way of escape. And he sent Jude years ago. We didn't really know what Jude did for a living, uh, but he ended up being a great asset. Even though he, they moved to L.A., they were still connected to us. Jude, We got Jude on my mother's case. He, they developed a protocol. Doctor, her doctor here... Uh, followed that protocol, and lo and behold, today, of all days, <laughs> we go to the doctor. And, and I was, today I, I just said, God, I just, I just need some good news, something that just uplift my spirits. Because yesterday I had, a, I had a day. Anybody have a day like where you just on one, where the you, you wake up and the enemy is already in your face talking to you, saying things that are not true, but at the time, right at first thing in the morning, you feel like it is and you feel overwhelmed? That's how I was yesterday. And I'm telling you guys this testimony because I know a lot of people right through here are feeling the pressures of what's going on in the world. You're feeling that internal pressure from outside stimulus. I get it. I felt that way yesterday. And I got in my prayer time. I didn't even want to get in my prayer time, but the Lord commanded me to go to go and get in some prayer time, and I did. While I was praying, the Lord said this. He said, welcome to the month of April. This is a month of miracles. And he said, things are about to get different, undescribably different. You're about to see some things that you've never, ever seen before. And I, I'm like, okay, God. I actually wrote down the word that God had given me because when he gives me a prophetic word, I want to hold on to it. I want to steward it. I don't want to just drop it and, and take it as, oh, God spoke to me, but I didn't remember. We got to steward our prophetic words because sometimes the prophetic word is for right now. Sometimes the prophetic word is for the next season. And sometimes the prophetic word is for seasons ahead or even generations ahead. And the, the word that you get is not always going to be happening right there. It's go, going to manifest right there. So we've got to learn how to steward that word. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did yesterday. Today we go to the oncologist, my mom and I. She was scheduled for chemo tomorrow. So he was going to go over her test results. And then tomorrow we come back and she does her round of chemo. He comes into the room, my mom and I are sitting there, and he's very, uh, he's very subdued. He's not energetic or energized. He's just very kind of straightforward guy. 
And he comes in and he looks at my mom and he says, uh, Jesse, I got some good news. And I thought he was going to tell her, you, you've only got to do a couple more rounds of chemo. He said, Jesse, you are totally cancer free. Oh, come on. Oh, what did you say? Come on. Jesus. You wow. are totally cancer free. I jumped up. She jumped up. We started crying. And I wanted to hug him, but, you know, with social distancing, we couldn't. And I just, I just gave God the glory. I just started to praise God and give God the glory. Because even though medicine was used, ultimately God has to do the healing. That's right. Medicine can only do so much. And he said himself, he goes, this is a miracle. He did not expect this outcome. They did not expect this to happen, that you would be cancer-free. They thought that they would just kind of, you know, keep it at bay for a little bit until, you know, something else happened. And uh, God totally healed that thing. Right. That's a miracle. Oh. I believe God. I believe we are in a oh, month of miracles. God. Because the Lord said oh, this to wow. me. He said, mm. it, he said, this is a, the month of miracles. It's going to be like a domino effect. He said to me, and the first domino has fell forth. <laughs> That means you can expect your miracle too. Whatever miracle you've been believing God for, whomever you've been believing God for, he's a healer. And he has to show us that his word is true. This is his word. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand forever. And so we have to stand on his word, declare his word, and become his word. Come on. We have to be as he is. Yes. And there are times when it's challenging, but when you have enough word in you, even on your difficult days, you're going to obey God. Yes. Even on your hard days, you're going to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though I go through things, I still trust God. I'm telling you, it's not just enough to get a good message. It's not enough for us to just hear good singing, good preaching, good teaching. We've heard that for a long time. We've got to see the goodness of God in the land.
the first corner of the devil showed out and dropped that big bomb of coronavirus on the world. And the first quarter, God said, I'm going to flip the script and out, out with the devil. And I'm going to show him who is large and in charge. Yes. And just like the Lord gave yes. my mother a cure, he gave her a cure. A cure means it's no more. Right. Just like he gave her a cure, he spoke to my husband in prayer. My husband was in prayer the other morning, just weeping before the Lord. And I came downstairs and I could sense the presence of the Lord had filled the room. And I came, when I came downstairs, he was in prayer, and I just, whoo, I could just, my whole body just jumped because my baby leaped yeah. on the inside of me. My anointing went higher. And, and after that prayer, my husband said to me, he said, this thing is about to end. Uh -huh. This thing is not going to go like the media thinks it's going to go. Uh -huh. yeah. It's not even going to go like the CDC says it's going to go. Don't believe the report of man. Whose report are you going to believe? I want to stir your faith up tonight to believe God, to turn your face back to the Lord and get it out of the news and get it out, get it off of all, the, all of that media, all of that stuff you've been watching. All those people are sending me all kind of stuff in my inbox. Do this. You won't get coronavirus. Do this. You won't get coronavirus. All of these theories, you know, I, mean, I thank you guys for caring, but I put my trust in the Lord. You can stop with all the inbox little videos because I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe God. You know, we're looking at how many people are dying. Have we looked at how many people are living through it? Amen. Amen. I've seen drastic cases of people that have recovered completely from this thing. So God is on the throne, and he is on his assignment as God. That's his assignment. Our assignment is to create a thing. His assignment is to establish it. Job 22, verse 28, the Lord said, if you will decree a thing, whose lips has he anointed? Yours. If you will decree a thing, the Lord says in Job 22, 28, he says, I will establish it. You just say it, baby, and watch me make it happen, says the Lord. Yes. Isaiah said, and in Isaiah 50, verse 4, he said, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I would know how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. Yes. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. Yes, yes. He said the Lord gave him the tongue of the learned. The Lord gave him that mouth to speak the words that God gave him. Yes. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I will make your mouth like fire. fire. Jeremiah 5, 14, I will make your mouth like fire. What you say will burn up what the devil is doing. Yes. Huh. Ah. Psalms 107, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, I hear the Lord Come talking on. tonight. He's telling yeah. you, my kingdom is a kingdom of words. I've given you the word of the Lord. And if you will say what I said, you'll see what I see. Yes. Come on, my God. Yes. His, his eyes are not locked only on the earth. He says, I can see things in the spirit, things that are going on to around you, things that you are totally oblivious to. He said, I already had your mother's healing already planned right here on this day, April 2nd, 2020. This day had been marked by God. And here we are over in February, worried. Some people in March, worried. The doctor worried. And oh, I don't know if we can do anything, Jesse. Well, we're just going to try our best. God was already standing in April 2nd, 2020. And on January 1st, he knew what was going to happen on this day because he's marked it. There are certain days for our, our lives that God has literally yes. marked. Mark. That's when his kabod really shows up in a manifesting way. When the kabod of God shows up, people have a kairos moment. They have a supernatural yes. encounter. Yes. Ooh, God won't let me stop talking about this kairos thing. Come on. Come on. Yeah. He won't let me stop talking about it because it's what he's doing. Amen. Like when we get in the vein of God, when we start to flow with God, Walking with him is not hard when you're flowing with him. When you're just letting him lead and you follow, it's not that hard. And he leads you. He says, I, he leads us in a path of righteousness. He leads us in the right way. Psalms 32, verse 8, the Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you shall go. I will, says the Lord, I will, I will guide you with my eyes. Even when you can't see, God says, walk this way. You can, even when you can't see him, you can feel him. Yes. Yes. Even when you can't see him, you can touch him. Oh, even when you can't see him, you can be him. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. I, I just want to be like Jesus. If I sound 
are radical and crazy. I, I don't apologize for it because I believe this time of self-quarantine is producing in us a greater glory. I believe there's a greater glory being produced in us because now we can't go hang out. Now we can't go eat everywhere. Now we can't be in gluttony mode. Now we've got to seek God for answers. You, you can't just always be on the phone because if you can only talk on the phone for so long before you even get bored with that. Right. And when people say, I'm bored, I said, that's a good time to see God. Wow. You're bored because you're thinking about you. Oh. Start thinking about God. Start oh. thinking about others and see how, your, uh -huh. see how your atmosphere shift from selflessness to selflessness. And when you're operating in selflessness, you are operating in the authority of God. Come on. Jesus. That's what the church is. She was, she was instituted as a selfless outreach to go beyond yourself and extend the hand of God to those that need it. It's what the church is all about. Yes. And I'm too hungry. I'm too yes. hungry, hungry to play around. Oh, yes. I've been in the presence of the Lord. Mm, I've been seeking God. Yes. I've been desperate for God. Yes. yes. I've been desperate for desperate. God. Just yes. seeking God, wanting God at a mm. higher, at a higher yes. level. I, yes. I've been so hungry for more of God. I said, I can't stay where I am. And here's yes. what the Lord showed me, you guys. Here's what the Lord showed me. He said, this time of self-quarantine is producing in you so much more than you even know that you're getting. He said, when these church doors finally open back uh -huh. up and people come to church, they're not going to come as the same people they once were. You're going to be a different person sitting in the seat. So my pastor's anointing has got to elevate too because I'm not going to be teaching a bunch of babies. I'm going to be teaching some people that's been in the presence of God and they've had a God encounter and now they don't want milk in Anymore. Yes. They want me. Yes. They're saying, don't just make me feel good. Give me the meat of the word that will empower me to do good. Yes, Lord. We're not going to be preaching to the yes. same people. I want to tell all the pastors out there, all the evangelists, all the teachers, all the prophets, all the, the apostles, we are not going to be teaching the same people. They're at home, and we think that they're at home doing a little something. No, just like God is inhabiting our heart, he's doing that all over the world right now. Yes, all yes. over the world, yes, God is waking yes, people yes. up. This is a wake-up time. Yes, wake, yes, wake, yes, wake, yes, thou that yes, sleepeth. Amen. Yes, he is. Put on the armor of life. Yes, That's what God's doing. He's putting us on the armor of life. Mm. Darkness came in the earth, but light is in Goshen. Darkness is yes, in the Lord. earth. People are afraid out there. People that don't know God are fearful. But yes, light is in Goshen. I'm telling you, yeah, yeah, God yeah. is making Come Vegas on. a Goshen. Yes, he is. The lights on the strip yeah, yeah, are, yeah. are not as bright as they used to be, but what is there is the word of God. Yes. God. Hotels are putting up the word of God on their big marquee. Uh -huh. Usually they have people up there. Now they got scriptures up there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, the other day, one of my spiritual daughters posted a, 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 a picture from one of the hotels that had, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. What, when did hotels start promoting God's agenda? When it went dark there? Oh, oh Jesus. When it went dark oh, there? That's what, the, wow. hey, this whole thing has produced something greater than you and I could have ever done oh. sitting in a building in a church. Yes, Jesus. Oh, he said, I am church yes. from the building to the streets to the hotels to the casinos the strip clubs are closed down so the strippers need a word too yes come on yes. jesus yes people are getting saved right here husband Ooh. are be not ignorant come on of that people are getting saved yes. and i gotta tell you god loves the church yes, he does. My mother was miracle, was the first of many. I'm telling you, expect something great this month. April's going to be a month where you come out of quarantine and you're going to see the Lord high and lifted up. I, I, I promise you, we're, we're about to have two Easter's. Woo. Yes, Lord. We're about to have a, a resurrection oh, Sunday at home with our families, uh -huh. and then when the doors of the church open back up, it's going to really be a resurrection party. Yes. It's going to really be a yes. resurrection party. The devil should have never messed with us because God said, now I'm going to give them a double for their trouble. I'm going to let them celebrate me on the day that is marked for me, and then I'm going to make a special day, a resurrection day, when the church doors open back up yes. and people come in full. They're not just going to come in and say, feel my I need to be filled up. That pastor's not preaching to me. I'm not getting fed. They're going to come for. I'm decreeing that. You're going to come for. You're coming for. You're coming back fully equipped, prepared for every good work. You're coming back. You're not going to be the same. You're going to 
come back a different person. Because you had to seek God yourself. Yes, You had to seek God yourself. Couldn't run to your pastor to get a word. Come on. Couldn't just run to Facebook to get a word. You can only watch so much media before your eyes get tired. Don't your eyes get tired watching media? Yes. After about, you know, 20 minutes on Facebook, aren't you bored? Yes. Unless it's a good preacher on. I, I'll be like, okay, that's enough of that. I like that, like that, like that. And I thank you guys. I thank you for being so diligent and honorable and integral with God that you're posting the word of the Lord. That you're posting prophetically. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord. I yes. love that. I love that you have enough faith to post what God is showing you. Mm -hmm. I love that you, you are posting scriptures. Somebody that is unsaved is seeing it. Amen. Somebody unsaved is watching us. Yes. Somebody that you don't even know, maybe even in another country, is watching your post. And it might be that very word on that very day that changes everything for them. Yes. See, I, I want to give you this, and then I'm, I'm going to open my Bible. I've already given you about 20 scriptures if you follow along. Mm-hmm. But here's what I want to give you. Psalms 3, verse 8. Psalms 3, verse 8 says, Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Mm. Your blessing is upon your people. Your yes. blessing yes. is upon your people. Yes. Yes. It's not upon the world. Come on. Come on. It's That's upon it. your people. That's for God so loved the world that oh he gave his only goodness. begotten son. Oh but but Lord. but he gave him for those that would believe in his name. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So salvation, Ooh. those that believe in him, belongs to the Lord. Come on. And from that he gives us his blessings as a result of his salvation. Come now on. here's what the Lord said to me. The Lord said. Salvation isn't just being saved. Right. Come on. Too many people have gotten saved and sat in church. Uh -huh. Too many people have gotten saved, got dressed up, went to church on Sunday, and that was their God time. Mm -hmm. Too many people have gotten saved and they said, well, I'm saved, I have salvation. It's true. But what do you do with that salvation? What's the next step? What's the next level from you? Because the Bible says we go from glory to glory. Right. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 3.18. We go from glory to glory. God never, ever it, it intended us just to get saved and that's it. He, he intended for his salvation to bless us. Oh, yes. His salvation to increase us. Because with his salvation, here's what the Lord said to me. Salvation is being saved, but also delivered. Ooh, come on. Ah, <laughs> salvation is being saved and also healed. Salvation is being saved and set free. Salvation is being saved and being anointed. Salvation that belongs to the Lord, uh -huh. that brings the blessing upon who? Me. His people. His people. Me. Uh. Yeah, you can say me. His blessings is upon his people. So salvation is being saved and empowered. Mm. Salvation is being saved and being favored by the Lord. I love what it says in Deuteronomy 32. Scriptures are just coming right now. Oh, it's like oh. the Lord is just, whoop, he's like, whoop, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the one I want to release. Whoop, whoop, I can just see them. They're just coming up in my Ooh, spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Deuteronomy 32, verse 10, says he found them come on. in a wilderness, uh, come on. in a waste, hollering wilderness. Uh -huh. He instructed them. He led them. He kept them as the apple of his eye. He found them yeah. in a wilderness. In a, wilderness. In a waste howling wilderness. Mm -hmm. He instructed them. Or some, some, uh, thank you, Lord. Here it is. Some text or some versions say he encircled them. Uh -huh. He instructed them. He kept them as the apple of his eye. See, God encircles those in whom he is marked. Come on, come on. He yes. encircles those in whom he marked. He calls them his people. Yes, he does. From, from Genesis to Revelation, God has always marked his people. Yes. They have a special something on their life. They have something special about them. It's impossible to get saved and do nothing. It, it only, only those that are not willing to move with the Lord get saved and 
sit down. Because the moment you get saved, you ought to get going. Amen. Uh, you ought to be about the Father's business. Right. Jesus said, I must work the work of him that sent me while in his day. For when the night cometh, no man can work. He said, I got, and he says, I'm saved for souls. Come on. Souls. Come on. I'm saved to, to see somebody else saved. I didn't get saved for, just for me. God didn't anoint me for me. My anointing is for others. So we got saved. Salvation belongs to the Lord. His blessing that is upon his people should be shared from person to person, not, not hoarded uh -huh. and yeah. afraid to give it away. Yes. I believe the more you give away, the more you get. You know why I believe that? Yeah. Because that's what the Bible says. Uh -huh. Proverbs 11, 25 says the liberal soul is made abundant. And he that waters others shall be watered himself also. What do you mean, Pastor Kim? That means the more you pour it out, the more of it you receive back. Amen. That's what Grandma used to say. You can't outgive God. Right. You can't outgive God. Because right. every time you give him, he gives you double for your yes. trouble. He gives yes. you a double portion. He blesses, he, he yes. blesses his people. Does. Jesus. He tells us that all throughout mm. Scripture. I love, he says, I will bless them and the places around my head. Oh, God, good Lord, I got to go there. Wait, let's, let's go there. Let's Ezekiel. Go. Let's go. Ezekiel. Oh, my goodness. I just heard this one in my spirit, y'all. I just heard this one. Come on, come on. Mm, Ezekiel 34. Oh, and I just turned right to it. Wow. And, and I have marked by it Kairos. Ooh, wow. Ooh, the opportune time. Yeah. You guys are in an opportune time. Yes, this is a time, an opportunity for you to increase in revelation. For in, in, increase your participation uh -huh. with God and watch, watch your revelation increase as well. Ezekiel 34, verse 26. Ooh, God is teaching this message tonight. I, I'm not even using notes. It's just, I just feel the unctioning. There are times when you use your notes and there are times when the notes are written on the tablet of your heart and your spirit just regurgitates yes. what it is. Right now, my spirit is communing with God. I'm seated with him in heavenly places right now. And you guys are seeing the result of me where I'm seated right now. I'm not even in the earth. And my spirit is, my body is here. My soul is here. My soul is blessing the Lord because my spirit is seated with him in the heavenlies right now. I, I feel like I've left the earth. Is my feet really on the floor right now? Woo! One miracle changes everything. I couldn't keep quiet today. I couldn't, I couldn't stop crying today. Everybody I told about my mother's miracle, I cried. I said, I just, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. See, God for a miracle because somebody desperately needed to see one to elevate their faith. You can go higher because you can say, I've seen it with my own eyes. Many of you have met my mother. As a matter of fact, when I preach at the women's conference, she's prayed for a lot of you. Uh -huh. So you know the power that she's packing. That's right. She yeah. lay hands on people and boom, they're out. Uh -huh. And you, so you've seen it. You've seen what she's gone through. We didn't just keep quiet about the whole process. No, you knew she had cancer. You knew she had recovered. And you knew it came back because I asked many of you for prayers. And so you've got to see with your own eyes the workings of the Lord. He used some strategies of men, but ultimately it was his hand that was upon her that caused this miracle that we witnessed today. And you can't ever say, I didn't see a miracle. I ain't never see God do nothing. You saw God. As a matter of fact, Pastor Arnold said, let's take her to church and I can show up. I said, well, let's not be so God right now. But maybe next week, we're going to ask her next week if she want to come. And, and just give a word or, or release her testimony. Yes. Because, you know, the Bible says this in Revelations 12, 11. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. Tonight I'm telling you our testimony. Yes. It's not just my mother's testimony. What? It's our testimony. Yes. I've had to take care of her during the season, and it's been a privilege. Yes. I said, God, I was the hardest kid to raise. <laughs> God bless the woman that she raised me. I was a challenge. And yet she didn't give me up for adoption. But God used me. Like, your ladder will be greater than your past. That's the word for the Lord right there. Your ladder. Better is the end of a thing. Yeah. Now I'm not the daughter that gave her problems. I'm the preacher that serves her. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm the preacher that protects her. That, that provides for her. She had the finances, but I, God had to, I had to steward her whole life, everything about her life. I felt so honored. I said, God, this is my mother. And to be able to serve her at this level. 
honorable. Mm. It was so honorable. Yeah. I, I just couldn't believe that God had called me to do that. It was a blessing. It's been a blessing. And it still is a blessing. And I'm telling you you heard our testimony because it's going to help some of you overcome. Yes. I love what William McDowell says. He says, I have seen so many miracles with these eyes that I lost track of them. I, st I can't even count them no more. I've seen so many miracles. That's going to be my testimony. Amen. Amen. This is the first of many. Yes. The first domino have fell forward. Yes. And when the domino falls yes. forward, it just starts to knock everything over. And, and I'm not talking knocking you out. I'm talking pushing you into purpose. Purpose. Come on. It's, yeah. it's already happened. Yeah. It, it's already happening. Yes. You walk into this month like you own everything in it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Here's what the Lord says in Ezekiel 34, 26. 34, 26. Are you guys there? Yes. Here's what it says. I will make them, you can put your name right there. Mm -hmm. I will make him, I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. And I will cause the showers to come down in their season. Uh, there shall be showers of blessings. That's what the Lord is saying to us. Right in the middle of a mess comes a blessing. Yes. Right in the middle of coronavirus comes the greatest blessing me and my family could have ever, ever received. Right in the middle of a mess, right in the middle of a pandemic. Come on, Jesus. What that tells us, God is bigger than pandemics. Amen. Because yes, his blessing supersedes a pandemic. His blessing is bigger than a pandemic. Come on. His blessing is a pandemic. It took you even bigger. 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 How big can it get? Bigger than what's happening in the earth? Yes. This blessing now has stirred people's heart to say, oh, God did it for Jesse Burns. God did it for Pastor Kim's mom. And if your mom is sick, I'm telling you, God will do it. I'll stretch my hand toward her and the same hand that was laid on my mother, I will lay it on your mother. Coronavirus is not going to scare me and stop me from laying hands on people. The Bible says we will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Promise. Yes, Lord. Blessing. Yes. The blessings of his being, he says, of being with him, of having his salvation, is that healing manifest. That's one of the blessings that he's talking about. Salvation belongs to the Lord. His blessing is upon me, and therefore his promises are for me. They're for you. I will make them. Them. Oh, wow. I put my name there. I put my family's name there. I will make them the Burns family, the Smith family. I will make them the Duffy family. I will make them the Harris family. I will make them the Boyd family. I will make them the Thompson family. I will make them the Scott family. I will make them the Brooks family. I will make them the Hayes family. You can put your family name there. I will make them and the places all around my hill. Yes. What is the hills of the Lord? Come on. That's the high places that God elevates us to. Yes. All around the places I've called you to. He said, I will make them and everything around you a blessing. Amen. I'll make your house a blessing. I'll make your job a blessing. I'll make the, your neighborhood a blessing. I'll make everything around you a blessing. He says, and I will cause the showers to come down in their season. There is time for rain. There's a time when blessings come in abundance. Yeah, there is a time. There's a time. Yeah, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. There is a time to uh, embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. The Lord said there's a time to love and a time to hate. There is a time of war and a time of peace. There is a time of prosperity and a time when things dry up. So in both seasons, I can trust God because he's always in the middle of it anyway. And there's a time where the showers come down. We can see that even in the seasons of the year. We can see that April showers. Uh, come on. Come on. April showers Jesus. bring May flowers. Jesus. That's been a word in the earth forever. And now the Lord is saying in Ezekiel 34, 26, I will cause the showers to come down. He's not just talking about natural rain. He's talking about the rain of his presence. Yes. See, some of y'all don't need money. You need God. Yes, Lord. What are you saying? I do need money because when you get God, you're going to get something that's greater than money. You're going to get ingenious ideas. You're going to get heavenly downloads. You're going to get revelation. You're going to know where the hidden riches and the secret places are. So you're not going to have to work so hard for it because as you follow 
be attracted unto you. You're working too hard. You're working by the flesh. And God wants you to move by the spirit. Because he said, I will make the crooked places straight for you. That I will show you hidden treasures, hidden riches, and secret places. There are things that God has for you that your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, and have not even entered into the heart of man. All the things that God has prepared for who? For us. Yeah, for us. Yes. Them that love him. Uh -huh. The ones who he has placed his blessing upon their heads. Yes. The one who is crowned with love and kindness and his tender mercy. Ooh, Jesus. He said, I will make. That, this is blessing season. See, if we start declaring the opposite of what we see, Amen. Amen. we don't have what we say we have. Yes. We will have what we say we have. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Paul says, I believe, and therefore, therefore he does what? Speak. Therefore he does what? Speak. I believe, and therefore I speak. Yeah. What is he speaking? He's speaking the things that he believes. Uh -huh. He says, I believe, and therefore I speak. And then he says, with the same faith. The church, the people that are marked by God, the people that God calls his a special people, a peculiar people, a holy people, those that will show forth his praise, the ones he brought out of darkness, the one he brought out of the strip club, the one he brought out of the dope house, the one that was strung out on alcohol, the one that couldn't get it right, even though they kept trying, kept trying, the one that was just chasing money and, the, and, and then start chasing God. He says, I those are my people. The ones I brought you out of darkness. All of us came out of darkness. Amen. If you didn't come out of darkness, you're lying. Because right. God had to bring us all out of something. That's right. That's right. That's right. He saved us. Saved us from what? From the wickedness of this world. He saved us from evil. He saved some of y'all. He saved from yourself. Mm, Jesus. He delivered you from your own crazy thinking. Yes. He delivered you from generational curses. Yes. That's what being saved means. I'm no, I'm no longer held to the standards that once was in my lineage. God has given me a blood, he's a blood transfusion. And now I'm no longer connected to that dysfunctional bloodline that I was once in because he's flipped the script. God knows how to flip the script on the devil. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. We're almost done. My God. I got to tell you this. One last thing before we go. I believe this message came because God wanted to stir your faith yes. and have you to arise and begin to de believe what God has for you. Yes. Some of you are going to have to go back to your journals. Come on. You need to go back. The Lord had me to go back to the prophetic word that he gave us at the beginning of the year. Come on. He said, you need to go back to the word because I already told you what I was doing. Uh -huh. You keep asking God, God, tell me what you're doing. God, show me what you're doing. He said, I already told you. I told you in that time when you were crying, and I told you to be still and know that I'm God, I, I told you then. If I tell you to be still, says the Lord, I'm telling you to be still because you're in a hurry to get somewhere and you don't need to. I've already predestined your steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way. God has already predestined the way that you should go. And so he don't want you all over the place, tripped out, missing him. Because that's what happens when we get all in the flesh and start trying to do things ourselves. We start to miss God and we miss moments with God. We miss opportune times. Yes. And then we end up in a wilderness. But he said, I found them there. Ah, yes. I found them there. Uh -huh. I encircled them. Yeah. I instructed them. I led them out of that place. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're the apple of my eye. You are more loved than you could ever imagine. Amen. We are. I can't even imagine the magnitude in which God loves me. It, it's just too too vast. Mm -hmm. I know that he loves me, but to the degree, it's overwhelming. Yes. I experience that sometimes when I'm in his presence. When you're in the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. and you start to experience his weightiness, yeah. that heaviness that comes and you start to cry and you can't stop it, that's how it was today when the doctor told my mother, you're cancer free. I started to cry, and the weightiness of God's presence came upon me. And I, and I was trying to calm it down because the doctor was there, and he looked, he said to my mom, is she always this subdued? <laughs> I just couldn't even control it because the presence of the Lord came into the room and said, I already told you what I was doing. I already told you that I was with you. 
I already told you that you were healed. I gave you that word when she was in the hospital for four and a half months and it looked like she was going to die. I told you, she shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Yes. I can go back to my journal and see the day that the Lord told me that. Mm -hmm. And there was many a night we had to pray her through. One night after a surgery, she was in so much pain. It was excruciating to watch. And I went up in a tongue. My, my tongues literally changed. Mm -hmm. They became like a war tongue. And I started talking to God. I wasn't talking to the devil. I wasn't talking to people. And I could feel my spirit mm. commanding the Lord. Some people said, what? You did that? I said, yeah. I was like, oh, Rabbi, sure, talk it. But he said I could. That's right. Isaiah 45, 11. He said, ask me mm -hmm. of things to come concerning yeah. my sons and concerning the works of my hands. Command ye me. Mm -hmm. He said, you can command me. And that night, I needed an answer. I needed my mother to have peace in her body so it could heal. Yes. And I went to the boldly to the throne room of grace. I stood mm -hmm. face to face with God, and I said, this is what your word says. And I'm coming because of your word. Because your your word, word drew me into yes, your yes, presence. Yes. Huh. Come on. And that night, she had a miraculous turnaround, didn't she? Amen. A yes. miraculous yes. turnaround. Yes. Ended up getting through that season, and now she's at a whole nother place. Healed, delivered, set free. Why? Because his blessing is on his people, his salvation. She's saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. If you are saved and sanctified and the Holy Spirit of the Lord is in you, you too should be enjoying these blessings. And we're going to see them more and more and more and more and more. Yes, amen. Romans 4, 17 says, call those things that be not as though they were. You call those things that have not yet appeared as though they're already there. You speak to that thing. Heal and come now. I don't need you tomorrow. I need it now in this hour. Come on. Call those things that be not, that you can't see. Be not means you can't physically see it. Uh -huh. As though they were, mean they already there. You just right. need to bring them from one realm, realm. into another realm. realm. Your oh. blessing is already yeah. there. God says, speak that thing. Yes. Speak to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain, whatever the mountain looks like, Come on. it will obey you. Yes, it will. He taught us you can speak to the wind, the storm, the rain, and it will obey you. Yes. He taught us the supernatural is part of your salvation package. Yes. Oh, oh wow. Ooh. Oh, my God. Yes. One last thing I want to tell you. Because the Lord told me this. He said, as his people, we are the righteousness of God mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. This is not about a me thing. It's a we thing. Come on. Two are better than one. Because they have a good report yes. for their work. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. We've got to get with the got to get with people and start inspiring them, encouraging them, yes. keeping them accountable to the word of God. Not to man, Come on. but to the word of God. Yes. Because when you word ready, you got a double-edged sword in your mouth. Yes. Isaiah 49, verse 2 mm. said, a sharp sword goes out of my mouth. Yes. Yeah. Psalms 147, verse 15, says the word of the Lord runs swiftly through the earth. It's yes. a sword. You Hush. send it. It's going to impact its target. Yeah. Thank you. Hebrews 4, 12. The word of the Lord is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes. It pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and yes. spirit and joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. We need the word to help us check ourselves. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 says, examine yourself. Yeah, yeah. See where you are in the faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Lord said, give them those scriptures again because somebody missed them. Amen. Hebrews 4, 12. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Isaiah 49, verse 2. Psalms 147, verse 15. All of those came right from the Holy Spirit. It's not from me, it's from the Holy Spirit. His word that is in me, he pulls upon it. Mm -hmm. And he calls it out. Yeah. 
And he uses it for the purpose of delivering us, of building our salvation package so we're operating in what he's called us to be. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. He sends his word out. His commands goes to, th to the earth. His word runs swiftly, quickly. Psalms 147, verse 15. I already gave you that scripture. Any, any other scriptures I gave that I, that I missed? Any, any other scripture? I want to make sure you guys get it because it's coming out. Isaiah 49, 2. Yeah. His mouth, my mouth is like a sharp sword. Romans 4, 17. Call those things that be not as though they were. God is telling you, I need you to open your mouth and speak my word. Some of you just need to go out into your yard, your front yard, and say, Earth, I'm talking to you. Uh -huh. Psalms 46. The earth is the Lord and everything that belongs in it. And you must submit to the word of the Lord. Yes. It says, when we praise the Lord, in Psalm 67, verse 7, let the people praise you, O Lord. I'm going to finish right there, Pastor Irma. You can give me some, some word, uh, some sound. Let the people praise you. Let the people praise you, O Lord. Oh, I love that scripture. Then the earth shall yield her increase. Oh, mm. Psalms 67, verse 5. Psalm 67, verse 5. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Verse 6. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, it says, will bless us. There's a blessing for us right in this diabolical time. The Lord said, he's outwitting the devil. He's beating him in his own game. Yes. He sent coronavirus. The enemy did. A diabolical attempt to take people out of the earth, some before their time. Times and seasons are in the hands of the Lord for the believer. The enemy wanted to take my mother out with that cancer, mm. but it wasn't her time. And what kept her here was the word of God. Yes. That's what kept her here, yeah. the word of God. Jew who created a protocol for my mom, him and his team all over the world. I thank God for him. Thank God for his wife, Nana. These are people that came to our church years ago. Don't despise the people that God sent. You might not know, you might not know their full purpose. It might be the same person that creates the protocol that your mother needs. We love these people. They were amazing. Yes. We were sad to see them move to LA. Right? But they've always kept in touch. Always been on. Uh, honorable and loyal to us, a heart that's connected to us. You can't, you can't conjure up that kind of stuff. Those are divine connections from God. I didn't know seven years ago, six years ago, when I met Yana and her son Amari, started coming to our church. I didn't know that she would marry Jude, and that Jude was an anointed researcher. Before he pray, before he takes on any case, he takes those documents, those medical records. He said, "We pray over every case because we don't just see it as a case; we see it as a life that God has given." They pray over people's medical records, people they never met before. They get medical records from all over the world. Mm -hmm. God had hooked us up with the right people at the right time. Yeah. Because what the doctor was proposing here almost killed her. And we said, God, what do we do? He said, I got a ram in the thicket called Jude. Mm -hmm. yes. A man after my own heart. Yes. And he shall execute my will. And he created a protocol. Man, I'm grateful. I, I am so grateful. Because what that tells me, 
If God does go before us, he makes the crooked places straight because his intention is to bless us, to give us the things that salvation delivers. I'll tell you again, Psalms 3, verse 8. I, I just saw this in my Bible. I don't know even know what, when I put it there, how long it's been there. But I saw it tonight when I was doing prayer. I want to give it to you, Shehela. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon Shehela. Your blessing. Shehela isn't just saved. She's delivered. She's healed. She's set free. She's anointed. She's empowered. She's favored by the Lord. And his blessing is upon you, Shehela. Write that scripture down and start giving it to people. And write down what that blessing is. If it's somebody that needs healing, write that scripture down. Psalms 3, verse 8. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And his blessing is upon my mom. It's upon my family. It's upon the people of God. I went over it again. And I make no apologies for it. Amen. When God is moving, we have to let him. Amen. I think when the church doors open back up around the nation, people are going to let God have his way. Yes. Yes. I know that yes. we'll be going to. I saw a miracle with these eyes. Yeah. And I want to honor what he honors. Mm -hmm. I want to love what God loves. And I hate what God hates. He hates evil. That's right. He hates sickness. That's right. He hates cancer. Yes. He hates diabetes. Yes. He hates heart disease. Yeah. He hates MS. He hates all of those diabolical diseases. ALS. He hates that. Mm -hmm. Because he loves his people. I want to praise love. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for your love. Thank you. Your God is love. Your love that covers a multitude of sins, God. I thank you for giving us a word that you will bless the righteous. I decree that over your people. Psalms 5, verse 12. The Lord will bless the righteous. With favor, he will surround them as with a shield. I decree a shield over you and your family. The shield of the Lord protecting you from the wiles of the devil. I decree over you a supernatural strength to persevere. A supernatural strength to open your mouth boldly, not being afraid of what people would think. A supernatural strength where you lay hands on the sick and you operate in what Jesus said you would do. Watching them recover. This blessing, this favor is upon you, no one of what's love. His blessing, his favor is upon you, Shirley Winston. His blessing, his favor is upon you, Kim Gladwell. His blessing, his favor is upon you, Mary Clay. His blessing, his favor, is upon you, J.J. Johnson. His blessing, his favor, is upon you, Star Jacobs. His blessing, his favor, is upon you, Elder Kendrick. And the list goes on and on and on and on. His blessing, his favor, is upon you. a prayer board at home with names and I am decreeing by the word of God that every one of those names will be healed if you need healing if you have a loved one that needs healing you can put their name right there and I will put it on my prayer board 
Because what God did for my mom, and I witnessed with these eyes, is going to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, I've done it. I just need somebody to call it into the earth. I am one. I'm like Isaiah. Here am I, Lord. Send me. I'll open my mouth and I'll say it. Psalms 2, verse 4, the psalmist says, I will declare and decree what the Lord said to me. His blessings is on my brother, Brian. My brother is home. And I decree his blessing is upon Brian Hamilton. It's upon all my siblings. The snare is broken and we are free. His blessing is upon my niece, Sherry. He's away from the family right now, Louisiana. I decree his blessing is upon you. Thank you, Lord, that your blessing is upon the righteous. Your hand of favor extends toward us. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And he has extended it to us. If you're watching this program and you're not saved, we do not want to close without giving you an opportunity to enjoy the same salvation that we enjoy. Because there is a special blessing for the righteous that's not for the world. Yes, there is. And you can say you know God, but if you haven't met Jesus and invited him into your heart, you only know of a God. And there are many of those in the earth. A lot of them got knocked down during this coronavirus. They got knocked out. <laughs> but there's still a God that is standing in me in his people. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for your sins that you would have access to God the Father. And the Bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. So he was the lamb slain for your sins. And if that's you, I want you to put in there that's me. And I want to lead you in a prayer that delivers you from darkness into light. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Receive me as your son, as your daughter. I confess my sins. And I ask you to forgive me. I was wrong. But now I want to be right in your sight. Now I want to be right in your sight. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and tell him I receive you, Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And this day forward, April 2nd, 2020, I declare I am saved and his salvation and his blessings are upon me. If you said that, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're saved. Welcome to our world. You're a kingdom king. Marked by God. Psalms 37, 37 says, Mark the perfect man and be holy of life. For the end of that man is peace. Welcome to a peaceable life. Peace. Yes. If that's you, let us know you got saved. We want to hook you up with believers so that you can grow in your faith. You got to get a Bible. If you don't have one, we have one for you. You tell us, we'll bring you one. If you're in Las Vegas. Amen. If you're not, we'll send you one. Amen. Just put that information there. Put it in there. I don't want to leave without giving somebody a chance. When one soul comes to the kingdom, all of heaven rejoices yes. when one sinner is saved. Amen. And it's about souls. Yes, it is. Yes, it we is. don't want to see you lost. We want to see you winning in life. Yes. Being on God's side is good. Because we have a better report than what the world says. Yes. I thank you guys for coming in to Bible study and joining us. From all of us, Pastor Zach, Pastor Irma, and Shaheba. Big crowd tonight. Because the four of yes. us and all of these angels here. House is filled with angels. Keep on praising the Lord. Yes. 
Keep on speaking his word. And keep being the blessed one. Good night.